This week on Wealth Track, the right path to a secure retirement. Why women's financial needs and priorities call for a different route than men's. Two knowledgeable financial advisors, Jen Springs' Jewel Bickford and Morgan Stanley's Amy Forte, show us the way. Next on Consuelo Mac Wealth Track. New York Life, along with Mainstay's family of mutual funds, offers investment and retirement solutions so you can help your clients keep good going. Additional funding provided by Luma Sales, investors seeking exceptional opportunities globally. Wintergreen, your home for global value. And Rosalind P. Walter. Hello and welcome to this edition of Wealth Track. I'm Consuelo Mack. This week we are starting a series on women and investing. Why is this such a critical topic? Because increasingly women are where the wealth is. And unfortunately, most women aren't taking ownership of their financial power. Remember the last season of Downton Abbey when Lord Grantham lost Lady Grantham's inheritance, which had kept the estate and family going? We don't want this to happen to you. Well, all kidding aside, women need more financial security than men because they live longer. The average life expectancy for women is 80 years in the U.S. That is five years longer than men. More than half of women live alone. Widows for an average of 14 years, and women tend to have different financial priorities than men. First, the facts. Globally, 27% of high net worth individuals with investable assets of $1 million or more are women. In North America, women make up 37% of the wealthy. In the U.S., women control an estimated $8 trillion in assets, and that is expected to triple to $22 trillion by the end of this decade. Yet women lag behind men in nearly every category of retirement planning. According to a recent survey by Ameriprise Financial, only 44% of women say they have contributed to a workplace retirement plan compared to 51% of men. 42% set aside funds in their own investments versus 52% of men, and only one in five have determined the amount of income they'll need in retirement compared to 28% of males. Well, we want to help change this risky behavior and help women achieve financial security for a lifetime. And it is a goal shared by this week's WealthTrack guests. Jewel Bickford is senior strategist at GenSpring Family Offices, where she advises wealthy families about their investments, charitable and estate plans and goals. She also chairs Jen Springs Women and Wealth Initiative and is involved in numerous charities supporting women's well-being globally, including Women for Women International. Amy Forte is the founder of the Forte Group, which is part of Morgan Stanley's network of financial advisors, and she is a managing director of Morgan Stanley itself. For several years, she has been named one of Barron's top 100 financial advisors and chosen as number one on its list of top 100 women financial advisors. Well, it turns out many women are extremely dissatisfied with the financial advice they receive. According to Investment News, a leading trade publication for investment advisors, 70% of widows change advisors within one year of their husband's death. What's the problem? I began the interview by asking Bickford and Forte why the traditional wealth management approach doesn't work for women. The research shows that women are, in general, dissatisfied with their financial advisors. And GenSpring has had a history for the last 12 years of having an annual women's conference. And the women themselves said they wanted to learn more. They needed more knowledge. And I realized that if you give women the knowledge, they'll turn it into personal wisdom for themselves. So Amy, in your business, it it used to be, I think you told me that 80% of your clients were men and 20% were women, and now it's 60% are men and 40% are women, and the number of women are growing. So, So, you know, how are their needs different when women come to you versus a male client? How are their needs different? First of all, I think it's very interesting. Women really do their homework before they come to you. So they, they've read a lot of background. And so that I think that's an interesting distinction. Mm. 
women are dealing with a lot of issues that men aren't dealing with. I think the second family multi-generational dynamic is, is very much on their mind. They like to work with another woman because they feel we perhaps will empathize with some of these situations that they're going through. Also, as I, I know you know the numbers on the number of growing women in business. We have some pretty prominent CEOs now. We have members at Augusta now. So we, women are growing and um, in their positions of authority. And so I think they're reaching out to other women that can really empathize with, with some of the issues they deal with. So, so Jill, what, what are women's top financial priorities? Uh, the females think of money as a way to maintain their lifestyle and financial and emotional security. The guys often think of it as a scorecard. Not always. Generalizations are hard. But often it's a scorecard. And, you know, the first question they'll ask in their, and their monthly meeting or their quarterly meeting is, how well is my portfolio done? Whereas the women tend to think, will I have enough? I'm fond of saying to the women, you have to match up your values with your spending, okay? After, I, I can give you a personal anecdote. Uh, I planned, as you know, very carefully for retirement in 2009. I didn't plan for the market crash right. of 2008. And I lost 13 to 15 percent of my portfolio. Now all my friends said to me, Jewel, you did a wonderful job. Well, that doesn't help you when you're in a double bind. You're no longer getting an income or s from your salary, and you're down 15% in your portfolio that has to generate income for you. So I had to match up my spending with my values. I, I no longer had disposable income the way I did before, and I had to decide what are my priorities. I don't think one hears that word too many times from guys when they're talking about their finances, they're not <laughs> talking about their values. Right. So, so, so when women come to you, you know, what do you think their top, their top financial priorities are? I, I would agree their top financial priorities are, I'm going to live longer, will I have enough? How can I provide for my children? How can I provide for my grandchildren? Um, how can we weather, currently, people are very concerned about, what effect is, is downturn in the market going to have in our ability to live our, our lifestyle? And we found it very, very helpful to really quantify these things. Jewel, research shows that women are less confident in making investment decisions. They tend to be more conservative because they are concerned about uh, their longevity, longevity and can they maintain their lifestyle. So how do you build women's confidence uh, in, in making the right financial decisions? Well, the first thing I do is try to reduce the fear and intimidation around finances. So many of my friends say, I'm not good at math. And that's sort of an excuse for them to not dig deeper and educate themselves. And I am, I, if there's one message I had that I feel passionately about with women, it's that you have to have ownership of your wealth. If you don't, with all of these life's transitions that Amy mentioned, divorce, widowhood, the fact that we live longer, taking care of elderly parents, if you don't understand your investments and what your advisor is recommending and the ramifications, you're going to have some nasty surprises in your life at just the time that you can ill afford it. So I am very high on educating women, and you need to, the women need to find somebody who's willing to do that for them. And if they'll do that for themselves, once again, I believe they'll develop their own personal wisdom. But you have to start by reducing the intimidation around finances. And to me, that's Finance 101. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, it, it, finances are very intimidating, uh, you know, I think to both men and women. It, you know, it, it strikes us that they are extremely complex. I mean, the markets are going crazy. We've lost confidence in a lot of our financial institutions. So what's the first step? I mean, where do I start? Well, she has to start by understanding her cash flow needs. Remember I said matching up your values right. with your spending. She has to understand how much cash she needs each year to sustain her lifestyle. And that's a particular kind of investment that has to be conservative or moderately conservative and fairly liquid. So that's why we say the lifestyle bucket versus the long-term bucket. Now the long-term bucket is not money that you can lose, but it's money that can be much more volatile or illiquid over a longer period of time. So first they have to understand liquidity and illiquidity and cash flow needs. And once they do that, then we can get into various instruments. 
And women have very good gut reactions. There, there's a new book out by a doctor named Luann Brizendine, and it's called The Female Brain. And finally, someone has shown their scientific research beyond a shadow of a doubt that mm -hmm. women have good gut reactions. So if you give them the knowledge and they will take the time, mm -hmm. they really will make good decisions. It's just a matter of learning. How do you deal with the fact that women are more security conscious, they are more conservative? I mean, how do you handle that with them? Well, I think, I think it goes back to really really quantifying it. You, you talk a lot about asset classes, historical performance. I think they need to know very much more about asset classes, but also how will they behave in different scenarios? Mm -hmm. Because I think there's an overreaction. Equities are too volatile. Um, bonds are too safe. Well, perhaps, but in what market? In, one, in some markets, I would argue perhaps this one, you know, there may be situations where bonds are more volatile. So I think education helps women take, take positions that they might have been afraid of in the past. And also, the asset-backed bonds were bonds that caused the market right. crash. I had a very good friend after 2008 who said to me, oh, I'm safe, I'm in bonds. And I said, you mean you're in treasuries? She said, no, I'm in bonds. She was very surprised to find out that she had a 10% allocation in asset-backed bonds. Mm -hmm. You know, women live longer. Um, and uh, they need their money to last longer. So talk about so, some of the strategies that one should think about at any rate to make my money last longer. Well, I think the saddest part, Consuelo, is when women start doing this when they're in their late 60s. Because it's very hard in your late 60s or early 70s, even if you're going to live another 20 years, all right, to start investing in private equity and some of the instruments that would give you over long term um, a great deal of return if you've got a good manager and right. he or she knows what she's doing. Uh, so the first piece of advice I have is start earlier with this diversification because when you, when you come to either of us so much later in life, there are still things you can do, but you may have the ill liquidity problem, which I mentioned before. I, I just want you to define uh, your approach is that, that you, you tell cl your clients to, to consider two buckets. Okay, uh, our, our lifestyle bucket is, our, is made up of investments that we think are very safe, as safe as you can have in today's market, and are relatively liquid, depending on the amount of cash you need on an annual basis. Our view is that you can only preserve your wealth through diversification, but through rebalancing your portfolio every year. It's very much like going to the gym. You don't go to the gym once and have a good figure. You have to go to the gym on a continual basis. It's the same way with your finances. You've got to constantly look at them. So, so in the lifestyle life bucket, we tend to have things that are uh, uh, bonds, high-grade corporates, uh, munis, high-grade munis, uh, money market funds. Um, we definitely have stocks, but they're not hedge funds usually because you're tied up for a year or two in hedge funds. They tend to be much more liquid mutual funds. So it's something where you can count on the cash flow and you have liquidity. That would be a lifestyle bucket. And again, the lifestyle bucket is to support your lifestyle. So that's income that you need to maintain your lifestyle. That's right. If you tell us you need $50,000 a year, $100,000 a year, we expect that lifestyle bucket to generate that year in and year out. Whereas your long-term bucket may have a lot of volatility and it may be illiquid. You might have private equity in that one. You may have credits, you may have real estate, you may have other instruments, but you would not depend on those for instant liquidity if you needed the money. And, and what's the long-term bucket for? When would I growth. use that? Growth, growth, and growth. Do you have a similar approach, or, or what is your approach at the Forte Group? No, I think there's a lot of similarity. Um, I think that whether you call it um, growth and income buckets or cash, income, growth, there are a lot of facets any well-diversified portfolio would have, but I would agree the goal is always never to um, touch principal. So you have to find realistic ideas of what the expenditures are going to be, and then you need to take a portion of the portfolio and use that 
Um, some very good instruments there. We use MLPs for income as well. Master Limited are, Partnerships. Right. Um, things that can, and income is not as easy to find right now, so I think you have to really sharpen your pencil and do some homework, but there's some very good MLPs out there. Um, sometimes if it's appropriate and the client understands it, you can get a little bit more on the high yield side of Muni. Um, so there's some very good opportunities. Again, same thing, you want to produce income and not touch principal, but we all need growth. Because so why not touch principal? I mean, I've, I've, we've had many conversations on WealthTrack that, that basically, let's get real here. That, mm -hmm. that I mean, unless you're saving you know, your, your money for your children or grandchildren, that you know, mm -hmm. in order to support yourself, it's your money. So, so why not well, well, go I, into principal? I have some friends who say, I'm not going to leave it to my heirs. I want to spend it and have a good time. I've earned it. So we get our information from our family members. And if they do not care about going through their money, and we do all kinds of projections and simulations, then that's up to them. But if you want to pass something down to your heirs and you want to be more conservative, then not touching principle is a good, is a good principle, no pun right. intended. So, so Amy, what are some of the strategies that work for women to, to have financial security? Well, I think always broadly diversified portfolios. It's not, it doesn't have a lot of sizzle, but it's, it's true. I, we love- Still, we, we've gone through a financial crisis Yes. where basically diversification did not really work that well. Where, you know, during the financial crisis, the only assets that went up were treasuries and gold. And, and managed a, futures a, did extremely well. Right, but, but, but let me just say, mm -hmm. a, the, the, the typical definition of a broadly diversified portfolio right. is among different stock types of stocks. Right. That didn't work. So, so when you talk about broadly diversified, what are you talking about? Well, I think, I think it's no longer stocks, bonds, and cash. I think we have alternative investments, non-correlated investments. We have real estate in the picture. There's, there's so much more available to the average investor, things that used to be only available to foundations. So I think when you, when you have a very broadly diversified, I think also though, I agree with you, you can't just position a portfolio and it's on autopilot. You have to look at what's going on in the world, take profits, lighten up, be, be very proactive. Um, just because you have a well diversified portfolio doesn't mean that you're not going to say, we're very concerned with what's going on in financials and we feel we need to get ahead of that and lighten up. So I think you, you're a little more tactical now than perhaps in the past. Is there anything different that you would tell a woman about her strategy than you would tell a man? I think you have to be very aware that whatever a woman's strategy is, it, it's going to have to last her most probably longer. Right. Which maybe goes to your point about don't delve into principle, especially if you're a woman, because you have no idea, there's no guarantee of when you're going to well, you know, and you live don't, or die. So, and yeah. you don't know when income producing um, securities are going to produce an awful lot less income. So you need something that's growing that will be able to produce that down the road. There's one thing I would tell a woman that I don't necessarily discuss with the men in our office. The one thing you can control is your spending. Exactly. Okay. Women love to shop. And you'd be surprised how many times we all buy things that we really don't need. And if you're worried about your lifestyle, really take a look at your spending. Women go through a lot of transitions. We, we have children. We are caretakers of both children and aging parents. Divorce, widowhood, uh, the average woman is going to live single the last five or seven years of her life. She is going to be a single person. So how do you get women through financially through the different transitions that they are going through? Well, I think the first thing we do is try to take the emotion out of it as much as possible. We always advise, let's do when, when there's a loss of a husband or a loved one, Let's do the things we need to do, um, legally take, you know, take care of titling, but let's not make any huge decisions right out of the gate that don't need to be made. Think it through, settle down, don't act out of emotion, and very often that's our role. In bad markets or in transition is to take the emotion out of investing and, and turn it into a very calm, well thought out decision. 
And that, I think that's an excellent point, Amy, because the charts show that you sell at just the wrong time because your emotion is fear. Right. And you and dump both everything. men and women. Yes. Right. That's yes. not a gender specific. So taking a financial advisor who can educate you and help take the fear out of your decisions is worth everything. So, so we ask each of our guests on Wealth Track if there's one investment that everyone should make it for a long-term diversified portfolio. I would ask you this in, in the context of advising women. So what's the one action we should take, Jewel Bickford, as a woman? I, I, it's the one I feel passionately about. You have to own your own portfolio and your own finances. If you, you, you can trust someone, but trust with knowledge. And, and explain how you own your own finances. You, I'm telling this to my daughters all the time because being a financial woman, my daughters say, Mom, just do it for me. I trust you. Please do it for me. I say to them, I'm not going to be around forever, ladies. You have got to learn this yourself. And I feel passionately about by the time I'm no longer on this earth, I want to make sure that you know what you're doing and that no one will take advantage of you. So please spend the time to learn. Amy, so what, what is the one investment that we should all have in a long-term diversified portfolio or the one investment that a woman should make, whether it be an actual investment or in time or whatever? Well, I, I, I have to mimic a, a little bit what you're saying because I agree with it very much. I think the most important thing... we must be thing, right. We must, must be, be right. right. <laughs> we must be right. I think the most important thing for women to do, honestly, is to, is to take charge of their own finances and their own future educate themselves. You need to have a plan and execute. So one last question, and that is how important it is for a woman to go and talk to a financial advisor alone as opposed to with her husband or significant other? I mean, how imp should every woman have a conversation with a financial advisor by herself, Jewel? Well, I think it depends on your relationship with your spouse, um, and it depends on how you share money and and whether you have the same goals. I know in my case with my husband, we have these conversations together and we're, we have a very close relationship. We're very open, so it's not an issue. I have clients who um, uh, don't say much when their husband is in the room. So I think it's one of the reasons at GenSpring that we've developed these small seminars so women who have a common interests can get together. Women learn by sharing ideas and learn from each other. Uh, so uh, they're very popular, these seminars. So I don't, there's not one answer, at least from my experience, to that question. It's having a variety of possibilities for your clients. Amy? Uh, I would tend to say, in, in many cases, yes, I think it's a good idea. I know when I go to women's conferences, I can go to a conference given by the same organization, but there's a women's conference. A little more openness, a little more sharing. The experience in life as a woman is just a little bit different. There are subtleties and ways that we think and, and, and many ways uh, that it's been proven that we think differently. And I think sometimes women will open up to you about concerns. They don't want to be disrespectful to their husband or their spouse, but they, they have concerns that are sometimes a little hard for them to, to openly talk about. So I think a one-on-one, -on -one, and that could be a lunch or an event that I think will help them open up and help you understand. And if you know them and you understand them and what's going on in their head, you can advise them in a much better way. And often women are very concerned about their husband's spending. I found that to be an issue. Uh, and that, you're right, would not come up in a... <laughs> <laughs> and vice versa. <laughs> <laughs> and vice versa. That's true, too. That's so true let's too. have that solo interview with your financial planner, no matter what, even if you don't think you have issues. So Jewel Bickford from GenSpring, it's so great to have you on Wealth Track. Thank you so much for coming, my dear friend, and Amy Forte as well. I'm sure you will become a dear friend from the Forte Group at Morgan Stanley. We really appreciate your giving such valuable advice to women and Thanks helping them reach financial me. security. Thank you. Thank you. At the conclusion of every wealth track, we leave you with one suggestion to help you build and protect your wealth over the long term. This week's action point is think like a woman. Schedule a visit with your financial advisor to discuss how your portfolio can reflect your long-term lifestyle needs and personal values. Most financial advisors tend to be performance-oriented. That's what their mostly male clients wanted. 
with women controlling more of the financial assets and depending upon them for years longer than men, it's time to change the conversation to reflect women's financial needs and priorities as well. Next week, we're going to continue our conversation about women in investing with award-winning retirement and social security expert Mary Beth Franklin and another top-rated financial advisor, Aaron Botsford, author of The Big Retirement Risk, Running Out of Money Before You Run Out of Time. If you've missed any of our past great investor or financial thought leader guests, you can find them on our website, WealthTrek.com. In the meantime, have a happy 4th of July holiday, a great weekend, and make the week ahead a profitable and a productive one. New York Life, along with Mainstay's family of mutual funds, offers investment and retirement solutions so you can help your clients keep good going. Additional funding provided by Luma Sales, investors seeking exceptional opportunities globally. Wintergreen, your home for global value. And Rosalind P. Walter. 